start these lightning talks. Up first, we've got Scott Massey. He's going to tell us a bit about oil, acid, and agencies. That sound right? That sounds right. That sounds right. Can you guys hear me? Awesome. This has been so much fun. Thank you all, and thanks for um, coming and listening to my short little thought experiment. Um, uh, I wanted to talk about MarTech a little bit and uh, Drupal agencies, but what I wanted to start with was um, salad dressing. Um, so I picked this up and I thought about this because um, I try and cook and I was watching a video of this guy, Jack Pepin, and he was fixing this dinner and it was this awesome dinner and he makes this salad and then he says, and if you look at salad dressings at the supermarket today, it's 50% sugar. That is not salad dressing, that is dessert. And you should always make your own salad dressing. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do like Jack does and I'll try and make my own salad dressing. And um, I realized that like, it's a pretty standard formula. It's three parts, three parts oil and then one part, some kind of acid like vinegar or lemon juice or something like that. And then almost anything else you want that you like that tastes good, that's like your own kind of style, whether it's like salt and pepper if you're pretty uh, vanilla like me or like wasabi or uh, anything you want to add. And um, it almost always turns out good and you shake it up and it's good for three days and it's the best salad dressing you ever had. And I just thought about like I was raised on this stuff and I looked at my refrigerator of these like 10 little bottles that had this much in there because who knows if salad dressing expires or not. So you just keep buying more and putting it in there. So I was thinking about that and I thought like how you get used to like this is like the standard and you buy the organic stuff for like an extra $2 and you think oh that's so much better but it's still like just it's still horrible compared to stuff you can make at home in your own five minutes, in five minutes. And so, um, like I go to a lot of uh, events like DrupalCon and Drupal Camps, um, but I also do a lot of MarTech stuff where I'm talking to CMOs and there's this trend where um, like 2017 to 2018, CMO budgets are going down uh, in terms of staffing, in terms of paid media, in terms of what they spend with agencies, and going up in terms of what they're spending on MarTech. And so MarTech is kind of exploding and that has a big effect on agencies. And we work with agencies a lot, so like your welfare is important to us. And so in thinking about that, I go to these events and I talk to these folks and when you look at what's on the market for them, they have a lot of different products that, they're, that are being sold to them promising them great returns and lift and all these different things by adding personalization or adding uh, different uh, information gathering and um, all this interesting stuff and that's a lot of stuff. But that's not even this year, that's 2011. If you look at what's going on in 2018, they have a, a whole ton of different tools that they're trying to evaluate and use. And like when you see the segment of like how much of that is going into the website, how much time that they're putting into like their websites and their digital experiences, if you like calling them that, like that's getting gradually smaller and smaller. And so like I've been trying to talk to these folks in a way that sort of um, validates the importance of having um, awesome websites and the value of using Drupal. And um, like what I've realized is that the agencies that we work with that are super successful at making this argument are the ones that recognize that marketing um, teams are sort of thinking along the lines of some kind of model like this, like some kind of framework to how they get from strangers to sales qualified leads through whatever sort of pipeline and customer life cycle of attracting, converting, and engaging their audience. And so like they're choosing the apps that do that. And I think that like the agencies that understand that and can understand not just like what they want their content to look like, but also like what their goals are and what their KPIs are, um, they're super successful. And like that framework doesn't have to be like this professional consulting agency which has their 43 point customer value analytics prioritization matrix. It can be something much simpler than that. It can be what I call like three steps to doing that, which is be accountable for your customer's success, like use their KPIs as your KPIs and make sure that um, you're, you're, aware, you're aware of what they're suffering, are, where they're suffering and where they're trying to succeed. Um, number two, be like their trusted advisor that helps them understand like how not just the website works, but how the marketing stack interacts with the website and the fact that everyone somehow ends up at the website, so it's one of the most important things and it needs to be 
super awesome digital experiences because when I talk to these people, they'll say, yeah, we got a point or two of lift from personalization, but what really did it was the awesome digital experience. And I try and tell them that like, the key to that is having an awesome team on your side because this is good enough for your competitors, but it's not good enough for you. Discontinue. Thank you, Scott. Okay, Vlad, please tell us about Drupal Camp Bar and Bay. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone for putting great conference. It was a great event. So uh, we are organizing Drupal Camp Byron Bay, another one. So if you are an international visitor and don't know where Byron Bay is, so if you look at the map of Australia, so at the moment we're here, Byron Bay is not too far away. So it's just right up there. <laughs> so you would ask why Byron Bay? Why not something? famous like Canberra. Uh, so Byron has beach, so lots and lots of beach. You can go on either side of it, and it's pretty much the whole beach all the way to Gold Coast or other way, all the way to Sydney. So Byron has a lighthouse. You go and make probably one of the most recognized photo in Australia. Byron has Australia's greatest export, which is? <laughs> Hamsworth. <laughs> they live there. One. Thor, that began. Byron has chili. Byron Bay Chili Company is pretty tasty. It also has cookies. They're also very tasty. You can actually find them in a lot of places in Australia. So Byron has dolphins every day. No breaks. And Byron has surfing with the dolphins, if you want. If you're lucky enough, you might see a whale. So jokes aside, we're looking for sponsors. Last year, those four companies did a great job of actually sponsoring us. So they went, went through. So thanks more to previous Next, Gaia, and Tamada Elephant Studio. Without you, we couldn't put a great event. We're going to announce next month call for paper. So if you're planning to go to Byron, make sure you submit a session. Um, that was one of the sessions out there. So we're going to have workshops, great speakers. So some of them you might have seen here. So this is the third event we're going to be running. There's going to be a code sprint. There's going to be burritos as well. So that's quite a cool thing. So as you can see, it's very quite small and unique boutique um, event. Uh, and we're running it right in the heart of Byron. So our website is Drupal Camp Byron Bay. Uh, go there for all the updates. We also have social media. So we are on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And uh, make sure you come into Byron. Thank you, Vlad. That was efficient. Okay, Kirill, please come up and tell us about Drupal-based IDP. Hello. Um, that will be probably even more efficient than the previous talk. Um, it's Hi, uh, my name is Kirill. I work for Catalyst IT, and I've just wanted to share my thoughts about the single sign-on, because every time you hear about single sign-on or the questions about it, it's kind of Drupal in the role of a consumer, like we want to sign in using someone's data and provide the user details to our Drupal installation. But most of the time, not most of the time, but there is a good situations when Drupal can be actually um, playing a role of IDP and provider, provide the user data to the applications. And it's quite cool because you don't need to like have an installation of some horrible monsters like IBM suits or uh, some other stuff. You just grab your data and serve it to the other sites, even WordPress or Joomla, if you will. And it's basically you can use a standard like SAML with the integration of SimpleSAML. PHP library 
and module for it called the Drupal Auth. And off you go. You can serve your user data to the, like, your satellite sites, or you can just um, split the concerns of your Drupal application and have a standalone self-managed portal which the users can um, put the details, manage their preferences and all of that. And then this data going to be used by the main website and this way you kind of simplify it a bit in terms of management. And yeah, um, just when it comes to single sign-on, don't think that the IDP is something not Drupal. Drupal can do it and do it quite good. So if you have a situation like that, some kind of requirement when you need to provide the data and you think, ah, where should I store it? Just use Drupal. <laughs> uh, that's, that's me. Thank you. Okay, we have Nick. He knows something about previous next local dev stack. Um, and while Nick's getting ready, do we have Doug Courtney in the room? Nope. Doug's out. What about Mayor Gigi? You'll be next. <laughs> Prepare yourself. <laughs> All right, can you all hear me? Cool, so um, the, we had a boff yesterday um, that was discussing local development stacks and um, you know, what, what people are using, what problems they're encountering. Uh, and so I mean, many of you already know solutions out there like DDEV and Lando and, and Wadby. Um, in my opinion, those are like a great tool to kind of you know, like kickstart you and, and have like a like quite fast on-ramp. Um, but when you need to like extend your Docker Compose stack to be able to say, you know, maybe you need a, a solar instance or maybe you need Elasticsearch or what have you. Um, you then need to get into the internals of DDEV and figure out how you add that in there. Um, so rather than spending that time doing that, uh, at previous next we just go pure Docker Compose and um, I just wanted to take you through some of the pieces of our stack. Like, I don't want to put this out there as a competitor to DDEV or Lando. You know, this is just how we do it. And these are some ideas you might be able to implement in your own stack to make it work a little better. Um, so one of the problems that we've come into recently is that uh, you know, X-Debug in containers really slows down um, development with Drupal. So you're clicking around a site, and your pages are taking you know, five, 10 seconds to load. And that's pretty much all you're doing on any given day in Drupal land. Um, so what do developers do? They you know, either have the choice of turning off Xdebug or leaving it on and dealing with the slow page requests. Well, they're lazy, they're gonna leave it on and then have that inefficiency clicking around the site. So we devised a solution to get around that, um, which is, so we have in our Docker Compose stack two PHP containers, one with Xdebug enabled, one without, and, uh, and in our Nginx, um, route, we just say if there's a header set that's saying that you've got um, Xdebug enabled, it'll go to the Xdebug container. If not, it'll go to your standard container. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, we also have a, and I understand this will look a little weird at first, but um, rather than just having a single Docker Compose file in our project, we actually have a base Docker Compose file and then one for each of the different platforms that we support with specific overrides for the weirdness that you have on OSX or Catalina. Uh, to then kind of wire it all up for a nice developer experience, we just get everyone to add a little um, bash alias in their .profile file. And, uh, and so what, in general, what this is doing is building up like a Docker Compose dash F, Docker Compose .yaml dash f docker compose dot osx dot yaml and it just load up all the different um, files required to define the stack and then you can just do dcu and you got your stack up with all of the right configuration so what that looks like uh, you know this is our kind of example project um, so nginx we've got the two php containers 
Um, and you know, the rest of the stuff's not important, but you know, just this is pretty standard dev stack uh, that will run on your Linux machines. Then we'll have a, um, like a Catalina stack. So what this does is um, file, uh, the default file mounting um, system with Docker for Mac is notoriously slow in large directories. So we actually get our devs to set up um, NFS on their host machine, and then we mount an NFS volume into the containers, and we've found like pretty significant speed improvements for that. Uh, oh, yep. So on um, to make the web server appear on just 127.0.0.0, we put network mode host. That's just a thing that our devs prefer. Um, Oh, don't worry about that one. And there's a couple of other little ones here for OSX in general. So this is, uh, you know, because you've got the virtual machine sitting between uh, the host and the container, that you need to have this like um, X debug host set. Anyway, so that's that's it. Maybe that can help you with some of your um, Docker Compose issues. Thank you. Okay, Mayor, please tell us about Drupal thinking out of the box. Hello, everyone. You hear me? Yeah, so my name is Maor Gigi. I'm a web developer working for, as a contractor for Queensland government. And um, um, I'm origin from Israel. So um, who's not don't know Israel? Uh, we are serving the army, and we thought about since we were uh, born to think out of the box. That means how to take the things that you have uh, available and make a combination of it and create new stuff, a new um, solution for the requirement. Uh, we call it combina. Combina, it's mean, it comes from the word combination. Um, so it's a well-known word in, in Israel. Um, I'll give you for example. Um, my previous employer was a, a state library of Queensland. Uh, he, he required me to build the mega menu. Now, a Drupal developer will probably go do some research and try to find models or any solution that uh, someone else already contrib. Um, I didn't find any thing that will match the requirement or uh, will be easy to implement or use in the organization. So I thought about what will be the best uh, to use with what I already have. Uh, so we're using um, paragraphs. So we already have paragraphs that have the grid and we already have paragraphs that have a, a submenu, text, image, so we can create basically mega menu from paragraphs. So I create a um, custom type uh, um, page, a custom page, sorry, a custom type page, yes, and uh, I call it the mega menu, so the editors can create the mega menu the drop-down structure in paragraphs. Um, now, that was very, very easy for them because they're already familiar with the, uh, with the paragraphs. So um, what left to do is just to render the paragraph or the, the page that they created inside the, the drop-down of the menu. And that was easy. I just installed a, um, a module that's called the Filled menu as paragraph. It's called so, sorry. It's called. Uh, uh, I forgot. I will check it later. Uh, it's just, uh, just an extension that they will uh, render the the page reference as a as a field inside a menu item. So basically, you um, when you drop, when you over the, the menu item, it will drop down and show and show the paragraphs that you created already. Now uh, this is one example of uh, getting few um, um, few models 
and build something that is out of the box, thinking out of the box, no, no need any uh, de extra developing or extra features that uh, our editor is not familiar with. Um, so bottom line, I encourage you to try to think first, reuse what you already have, um, instead of create something new or um, use something that your editors, you need to train them again and try, to, and maybe they can be confused about it. So um, this is my talk for today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mauricio, Drupal migrations. Good, bad, ugly, wonderful. We'll find out. Oh, one moment. Can you hear me? OK. I'm glad that I have the microphone because I lost my voice already. Um, my name is Mauricio Dinarte. I come from Nicaragua. Uh, it's a very beautiful place in Central America, very warm. We have like 28 to 32 degrees all year round. We have lakes and volcanoes and lakes inside volcanoes and volcanoes inside lakes. It's pretty crazy. Uh, if you want to see lava, like you can either go to Nicaragua or go to that website and that will give you like a real tour of how to go all the way to the crater and see the lava flowing. Uh, Nicaragua is right there. So it took me a while to come here. It's my first time in Australia and I'm enjoying it. So thank you very much to you all. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about migrations. Um, I, when I first started doing Drupal migration, I have been doing Drupal development for quite a few years already. And I thought that, you know, this cannot be that hard. But little did I know, right? Um, when I first started, I was presented with so many concepts that I didn't understand at all. And it was very frustrating. And you know, I, at some point I just wanted to cry, like I just want to move some content to my website. Why does it have to be so hard? And the moment that everything started to click was when I realized that all these words that I didn't understand at the beginning were part of a group. So in any migration project, any particular migration project, I will always have one source and one destination. So I only have, have to pick one of those categories. And I will have a lot of uh, processing plugins that I will uh, use to manipulate my data. Um, I believe that one of the best way to learn is by teaching. So uh, in August this year, I had the crazy idea of writing one article every day about the migration API. So that is available in a website called Understand Drupal. So it's like 31 days. Uh, of migrations, and the idea of the goal was that if you have no knowledge at all about Drupal migrations, you can go to this website, and it's like a step-by-step -step guide on how to think about migrations in general, what are the different concepts, how do they build on top of each other, and then how you, you start like migrating from different type of sources to different type of destination. Um, like, for example, when I started, I didn't know I can migrate from Google Sheets for, or Microsoft Excel or so many other sources. So this was basically a brain dump and a lot of research uh, about the Migrate API. Um, I was not able to cover everything I wanted, but after the 31st blog post, I needed to take a break. So I hope to write more in the future. Um, you will learn how to debug migrations what are some trade-offs of using one or another um, you know, tools and so on. And it even has an introduction to uh, upgrades, like going from six to seven uh, to eight or nine. Um, this is a, well, thank you to many people, including Vicky, who is there, who helped me understand the API. Um, and also this project was sponsored by some companies, so thank you to them as well. One thing is that um, this, is a, like, this is all for free. You can go to the website and and learn about this. 
the website is a general education project. It's not only about migrations. Uh, I haven't written a lot because of lack of time, but I want to keep doing more on migrations and more on different topics, testing, theming, site building, and so on. Uh, another thing is that it's a little bit ambitious because it is not only in English. Um, I try to pu I, I publish in English first, but I am also learning French. So how do I learn French? By writing in French, of course, right? So about five or so articles have already been translated to French, and more are in the queue. So if you, learn, if you know French, please practice with me because I want to learn to do this better. And even though Spanish is my native language, I still have been translating to Spanish, but that is coming soon. And I also say this is ambitious because my long-term goal is not only about text, I also want to put videos. So check, check the site for what it is already there. I think that I wish I had had this resource when I started doing migrations, so have a look. I would love to talk you know, in the after party or on Twitter, you know, in general. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know what Sai is going to talk about. Hopefully something. I'm going to wrap this up. He's going to wrap it up. Um, is this one? Is this thing on? One moment. Um, as I set up my laptop to do the closing notes for the, um, to the, for the conference, um, my lightning talk that I just decided I wanted to spontaneously give um, is that I think that I've been, so Campbell, who's organised this conference, um, works with us. And um, thank you, that was cool. Um, and, and so two years ago, uh, Drupal South uh, Auckland was Campbell's first Drupal South. And um, the second night of the conference, we went back to the Airbnb. Uh, and pretty sure Campbell had like found some lines of something somewhere, but essentially he was just off his head on community collaboration. <laughs> um, so I, you know, and then a year later, he's like, I want to submit. Um, for a Drupal South. I want to, I'm in Hobart now, I want to do a, I wouldn't do a conference here. Um, and I'm like, whoo, okay, go for it. Um, it's a big thing, like I didn't necessarily know if I, if I was going to be able to support um, that. And, you know, but it's been really, really amazing to see how the community that I'm part of and that we're all part of uh, has essentially come into play in all the in all the aspects of that um, and allowed someone to go from not doing Drupal a bit over like three years ago, uh, or, or IT, um, to be organizing a Drupal conference, um, Drupal South conference. So if you think that sounds cool, perhaps you want to submit a conference. Um, it's not really out of the question, right? So if you, know, if, you have some, if you want to have something in your hometown or if you want to actually add that to your skill set or something, it's not a simple thing, but like, I think we've got the evidence that you can do it. So submit. Um, so that's the end of the lightning talks, three minutes and 15 seconds. Um, so I'm just going to close up uh, now. So thank you everyone for being here at uh, Drupal South, obviously very close to my heart. Um, Campbell's hometown. Um, so I'm just going to wrap everything up and we can get on with it. Uh, firstly, Platform SH had a Lego competition. It had a, uh, what is it called? Eiffel Tower, out of Lego. There, it's being held up. And the winner of that is Tom Wilhelm. If Tom Wilhelm's here, you can immediately start constructing Lego. Uh, second is uh, Doghouse did a raffle, and the winner of that raffle, and I don't know what that was, what the prize was, it could be a magical thing, uh, is a voucher, flight center voucher, mm -hmm. you can get home, um, <laughs> Mar <laughs> Marcelo Morietta, I don't know, if, I said that in the real Spanish way, yeah, and then uh, Annex, I don't know if anyone saw the Annex, because uh, I helped him. I helped a little bit with this, so I was very proud of it. But if you ever want to see your image as a box shadow, full box shadow. Fong uh, Le, I don't know if I've said that right. And I think the prize for that was a uh, uh, subscription to one of those things, those training things, um, Drupalize Me. Front-end masters or Drupalize Me. 
Uh, so I just want to call this out again because not everyone was here, but Salsa are doing this thing where uh, if you want to see something, if you want like to order Salsa around and get them to work on something you think you're passionate about, you can go here and you can vote to get them to do things. And I think I've represented that correctly. I like the idea of ordering Salsa around. It sounds really good. Um, so there's that. So that's a really great initiative. Um, and then next year, 2020, November 5th to 6th, we have a Drupal Gov. Um, and that's at the Hotel Realm in Canberra. Um, so very, you know, it's a great, great conference, very similar to this. Um, we get a lot of government oriented stuff. So if you haven't been there before and you know you don't like surfing, come to <laughs> Maybe you like a bit of smoke. Uh, it's a lot of smoke there at the moment. Um, and the, the, something that people wanted to know all about was where is the next Drupal South going to be? And Drupal South is going to be in Wellington. <laughs> and this, this, pic, this picture's legit. There's a city there, there's a bay, uh, there's wind that you can't see, because you can't see wind, but there's a lot of wind in this picture. Uh, but no, it's Wellington's great, excellent, I think there's like a craft beer thing going on there as well, which we all love. Um, and um, next slide. So, we all said it, after parties at Shambles, I was here a few weeks ago for congratulations to Campbell because he got engaged a few weeks ago. So we're at Shambles, we're there at Shambles. Uh, I'm hoping they still have this cocktail because I would only ever have one of them uh, per, per week. Um, but yes, Shambles after party, uh, it's, it's up in, the, in town a little bit. If you want to share Ubers there or walk, you can walk there. Um, so yeah, please join us. And then this is the thing, we are at 298. Like, and like this is me and like Lee Rollins' like love child, right, is to see if we can get, how many people we can get into the Drupal Slack. So, you know, 299, 299. legit, not, I'm not closing this, this damn uh, Drupal South until we get 300, but I'm, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's how you can get in there. Um, everyone, and I, I think I want to take just a moment to mention that people do point out that this is a bit annoying that we lose history and stuff like that. I feel like getting everyone in one place is really good. So we don't, we ha this is the best place to ever, for everyone to be. Please join if you want to share and if you want to get some knowledge or if you want to find me, I'm, I'm Sime, S-I-M-E, if you want to come find me, which reminds me, the only person that I know who doesn't want their photos taken that I'm aware of is Jess. If you are one of those people, can you please talk to me because I will personally make sure that you didn't get captured in anything, so I just wanted to call that out as well. Um, and then I want, to, I want to just do a couple of quick thank yous. I'm nearly done. I want to do a couple of quick thank yous. Um, because uh, there's just, like we've had, we, you know, we, every conference has little things, so I just really want to thank like Pamela for helping us out with like sponsorship, um, like, like working with the sponsors and stuff like that, or, like jumping in. Owen jumped in and helped out with um, managing keynotes. Like 80 options, they're a sponsor, but over and above that sponsorship, they're based here, they basically provided massive amounts of um, resources for this conference. Guys like uh, Eduardo here in, in Hobart's been really supporting. I don't want to have missed out. Vladimir jumped in and like he's doing all these photos and stuff like that and he's always there and always does these sort of things. So they're just like my personal little like cool, you guys are awesome. And who? 301. Rio... 301. 301. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do it because I'm not fit. Um, all right, so that's good. That's it. Thank you. Now I'm going to hand over to some more formal thank yous with Chris, who probably can tell you about Drupal Gov in, Cam um, in Canberra next year. But take it away. Chris. I, can, I can tell you about Drupal Gov in Canberra. Um, Drupal Gov is a great event. It's really public sector focused, um, but it's fun like this one, and um, it gets a great turnout. So I, I would expect we'd have um, potentially over 300 people there uh, in 2020, and that's being run by Salsa who stuck their hand up to do that as well. So uh, that'll be great. And Wellington, which is my other hometown, rock on Wellington, that'll be awesome too. Um, but I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, I'm here in my capacity as um, a member of the Drupal South Steering Committee. Uh, and my job, even though there aren't very many of us left, well done for staying, guys, um, is just to call out those who've done a, an excellent job in organising this event, and then you can all go and get drunk. So first of all, um, can you guys stand up as we go? I'm just going to read your names out. Uh, Enzo Garcia. Cy Hobbs, Sharon Manikaraj, Vladimir Rudikov, 
Feb Dow, Margie Cermak, Fonda Lee, uh, Jana Malakova, Jamie Schmidt, uh, Owen, he's gone, Jay Friendly, Rosie Gooch, Marjorie Tongway, Navdeep Kaur, Kate Hogden, Ivan Zugek, Daniel Nitschi, and of course, Campbell Tilly. Can you give these guys a big round of applause? Thank you very much, guys. You've pulled off another awesome event that will go in the annals of Drupal South. Consider yourselves done. Thank you.